So you probably noticed that I'm missing a bit of my status bar right now, and all I have left over is my system tray. So what we're looking at today is an application called Stallone Tray. So Stallone Tray is a standalone system tray. Now the reason why I don't have my Polybar running right now is because Polybar has a built-in system tray, and when this application is running and there's another application that has a system tray, they don't really play that nicely together. But if you go and disable Polybar system tray, it's going to work perfectly fine. Now, not every single status bar actually comes with a built-in system tray. So if you're using something like, say, DWM bar or Lemon bar, you won't actually have one. So in a lot of people's cases, they just will go without one. But if you do want a system tray, you will need to run some sort of third-party application like this. So to go and run Stallone Tray, it's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is just go and run the Stallone Tray application. Now, you probably don't want to launch it in your terminal like this. It's perfectly fine for testing, but for general usage, you probably want this to be in wherever your window manager actually auto starts applications. So in the case of BSPWM, that's just done in the config file, and you auto start it the way that you auto start every other application on your system. And this system tray works the same as any other sort of system tray. So if I say go and click an icon up here, it's going to show me a drop down menu. And if, you know, it opened up the application when you click the icon, it's going to open up the application when you click the icon. It works the same as any other sort of system tray. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Where it does start to get a bit interesting is when you're looking at the configuration. So over my first screen here, I'm not going to go over every single thing you can do because some of it's pretty boring, like changing the background color. You can assume that's here and then work it out for yourself. But when you go and look at the man page for this, it does actually show you something really neat about how it can be configured. So man Stallone tray. As you can see, you can do basically everything with either an option or it also shows you the value you can go and set inside the config file as well. So obviously the one missing is where the config file is located, but if you want to go set, say, the background or decorations or display, that can all be shown inside of the man page as well, and it's pretty much the same name being used for the option as well. Now, out of the box, you're going to want the config file to be located in your home directory in a file called .stallonetrayrc, but when you first run the application, it doesn't actually go and make this config file for you. What you need to do is go and actually copy it from your slash Etsy directory. So if you go and run this command here, cp slash etsy slash tray rc and then copy it into your home directory then the application is going to run if the config file is missing though the application won't actually run it seems to only be able to run if the file is located in your home directory but if there is an empty file in the home directory with the same name it will run just fine i'll be going through the configuration inside of the config file just because it'll be a bit easier to follow along with so inside of this file right here what we're going to go and do is play around with the vertical setting. Now, I'm not going to be going through the order of the file. I'm just going to go in the order of things that are interesting. So, the vertical setting is going to set whether the bar should be shown in horizontal mode or vertical mode. So, obviously, it's running in horizontal mode right now because this is set to false. And if we go and set this one to true and restart Stallone Tree, as we're going to see, the bar is now basically shown in a vertical layout. Now, as you can see, the icons are being loaded vertically, but they're being loaded in a bit of a weird way, and that's because we don't actually have our gravity set properly. So, I have a gravity set for the horizontal loading, but not for the vertical. So, in this case, I have east set for horizontal and nothing set for vertical. So, I'm just going to set this and then ex actually explain what this actually does. So, if we set this to north and then restart this, as we can see, it's working fine now. So what this basically means is that the bar should be grown starting from the north side and then going south from there. So if we go and set this to south instead, what we're going to notice is this second icon we have actually appears above the screen. So the second icon in this case is going to be our networking. So I'm just going to actually go back to the north version and open up a new icon. So open that and then let's say open up say discord canary as we're going to see now discord actually appears below everything between restarts of the bar the icons did move around a bit but we can go and modify the direction the icons get loaded in when you're actually spawning new applications so let's go and quit out of discord and what we're going to do is set this to ne and if we go and restart Stallone Train now and actually launch Discord back up, as we're going to notice, it's going to spawn in the exact same location. So we've got the other icons loaded in, and then the new icon gets put at the bottom of the list because we're growing in the north direction. But if we set this to SE instead and quit out of Discord once again and quit out of Stallone Tray once again, as we're going to notice, when we actually launch this up, the icon should actually appear at the top instead. 
And the same effect does occur if you're growing the bar in, say, the east direction and you're spawning the icons in the west direction instead. Now, as for geometry, this is a bit more limited than I had wanted it to be. So if we go up to that one, basically we have two different settings. We have the max geometry and we also have just the uh, regular geometry as well. So max geometry is basically the maximum size of the bar. Not really any... Thing I need to explain there, but as for the regular geometry, we have 1 by 1 plus 3808 plus 0. So 1 by 1 is basically the size of the bar itself. Now this isn't actually in pixels, what it's actually in is the slot size. So a slot size is basically the size that a icon is going to fit into. So 1 by 1 is the special setting you can leave it on to make it so the bar is just going to grow and shrink as it actually needs to. If we go and actually set this to, say, you know, 2 by 5 then it actually will always be 2 by 5 regardless of how many icons we actually spawn. And I think it's actually spawned some of the icons above the screen. Now the second value we have in here is for the X and Y offset. So plus 3808 basically means plus 3808 on the X axis and then plus 0 on the Y axis. Now the reason why I've done it like this is because until I started recording this video I didn't actually realize there was a way to actually specify which display to actually spawn this on because by default it's going to try to spawn on the leftmost display you have which in my case is going to be my second monitor where I have OBS and things like that. So either way will work but if you want to go and set the display setting that is done with this value right here and if you want to go and use it, just make sure you actually uncomment it and then set the value as you would. Now, when it comes to the icon slots, sadly, they always have to be a square. So we only get one value to play with here. So in my case, they're going to be 32 by 32 pixels. And as you can see, they look like this. Now, make sure the slots are actually bigger than the icons themselves. Because I have noticed that if they are smaller, you might actually have the application not really knowing what to do with them. So let's go and set it like that and restart it. Oh, it's actually just trying to cram everything into it this time. So just, if you don't want it to look terrible, maybe this is just the style you're going for. Make sure the slots are bigger than the icons themselves. So if we're going to go and set the icon size then, that's going to be done with the icon underscore size value, which is this one right here. The minimum, I believe, is 16. The default, I think, is 24, and there isn't a maximum value. So if we want to set this to something like, say, 100, you probably can do that. I don't think there's anything stopping you. Nope, doesn't seem to be anything stopping you, but some icons might not play nicely with it. As you can probably see from this one here, OBS is getting bigger, but my networking is stuck at a specific size. But you'd never realistically make your icons above, say, like 48 or maybe 64 anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. Now, another one that we have that you may have noticed when I close Discord is called No Shrink. So No Shrink basically means that... When an icon disappears, don't make the bar smaller. So as we will see if I close Discord here, the bar isn't going to get any smaller when that icon basically disappears. Now it did reorder stuff because of the way that I've got my gravity set, but the bar is still the exact same size. So if we go and set this to false instead, this is going to work a bit more like you'd probably expect the system tray to actually do. So if we go and open up Discord now, give it a second. As you can see, if you do open up an application when your icons are too big or your slots are too small, then it will actually try to break the bar. So just make sure the slots are bigger than the icons. Anyway, if we go and close this, now it actually will resize it once it's closed. Now this application does have built-in transparency, which is nice because if you use something like Pycom directly, what's going to happen is the icons are going to start being transparent rather than just the background. So that can be done by setting transparent to true. If I set this to false, you're actually going to notice that the color also changes because the way that color is being set is through a tint. Now tints are a bit of a weird one. Think of it like having tinted glass. We have the transparency enabled, some sort of filter above it, and then you see whatever's behind that. So the way that we set a tint is done through the tint setting. So we have a tint level, which is basically the level of opacity. I've got it set to 128, 255 being no opacity, and zero being disabled. But we can go and set this to something like, say, cyan, which is the tint color. And as we're going to see now, it's got this cyan feel to it. And yeah, it works like you'd expect tint to. Now, whilst the lone tray is transparent, you can actually go and set something as well. So you might notice that the edges of my Stallone tray here are a little bit blurry. And this is something that really shows how old this application actually is. So basically, if we go and set the fuzzy edges setting, it goes and does this. I don't know how well it's showing up on YouTube, but if we go and set this to zero, 
as we're going to probably notice, it's a very clean line like you'd expect most applications to actually be. But if we go and set this to 3 instead, that should be a bit more of an extreme look. And you might be able to notice, you can probably notice that the bar is a bit thinner than it was before. There's one other thing I want to mention about the aesthetics, and that is the pixmap underscore BG. So this is going to let you set a background image. Now, this doesn't accept a JPEG or a PNG image, which once again shows sort of how old this application actually is. What it accepts is an XPM image. So what you can do is take the image you were going to show, stick it in GIMP, and then just export it as an XPM. And basically, if we go and restart it like this now, as we're going to notice, we have some images back here. Now, it doesn't resize it itself, so make sure you've actually gone and done the resizing for it. Otherwise, you're just going to have one giant image trying to be shown. Most window managers play perfectly nicely with this, but if you're using something like Openbox at least a couple of years ago, what you had to do is set doc app underscore mode to simple, which basically just changes the way the doc actually works. So, I don't know if that's still the case. On BSPWM, I can just leave this on none, and it plays perfectly nicely with it. Now, my other favorite thing about this is the Kludges option, which basically is an option for enabling certain hacks, which I feel like every application should have. I haven't needed to use any of these, but if there is any of these hacks that you need to use, this is basically how you go and enable them. Now, I know that someone's probably going to mention this. I'm well aware that this application was last updated about five years ago, but as you can see, it's basically a complete application. There's no reason why you have to keep updating something if it just continues to work. So maybe one day it'll stop working with your X server, but X really hasn't changed that much in the past five years to actually break this application. So it's going to be perfectly fine to continue using. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything I want to mention. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I use Polybar, so I'm not going to be running this application myself, but if I wanted to actually have a system tray on DWM or have a system tray with Lemon Bar, I think this would be something that I would definitely consider. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Nathan, Monster, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitity, Road, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. So if you want to go and support, I welcome links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libra Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And... I'm out.